Hi friends, welcome back to another pick a card reading. Today's pick a card reading is all about your soulmate. We are going to find out what their physical appearance looks like, what their personality is like, and how you might meet them or come into connection with them. Remember, this is just a general reading, so simply take what resonates and leave what doesn't. These readings are always meant to empower you. Remember that you have free will and the ability to change anything that you want at any point in time. If you would like to explore my podcast or my online shop, check out the links in my description. Now, if you are new to pick a card readings, here's how it works. The first thing that you're going to do here is you are going to pick the pile or the crystal that you are the most intuitively drawn to. So we have pile one here. To, well, let me just let you know this. All of the crystals on the piles here are rose quartz in honor of our love reading for our soulmate reading. So we have pile one here with the rose quartz point. We have pile two here with the rose quartz raw chunk. We also have pile three here with the rose quartz palm stone. And then we also have pile four here with the rose quartz sphere. So you can choose one pile, you can choose more than one pile, you can choose all of them. It's totally up to you. Um, but when you're ready, you can go to the description of this video and find the timestamp that is linked to your pile so you can skip ahead to your reading all about your soulmate. So thank you so much for letting me read for you. I will see you on the inside. Hi, pile one. Welcome to your reading. Now let's dive in. Okay, so pile one. First card that you have here is the nine of cups. You also have the weaver, rediscovery, transition. We also have Jean-Michel Basquiat or Jean-Michael Basquiat. You also have the snow leopard. This one says the watcher. We also have impasse. And then you also have transition cauliflower. You have the quail and gooseberry. This one says anticipation. And then we also have feeling good will bring me far more than whatever I thought I needed. So just a quick overview here, pile one, the top row is going to be um, what your soulmate looks like, what their personality is like, and then the bottom row is going to be how you might meet them or how you might come into contact with them. So let's dive in. The first card that I want to talk about here is the nine of cups. So with the nine of cups, in terms of your soulmate's personality, their looks and their overall energy we're gonna start with their physical appearance so I feel like your soulmate is someone who has a very warm and welcoming appearance I feel like they have a very nice smile um, I think that it's really easy to see them radiating happiness and contentment I think that this person has a very friendly demeanor um, I feel like they have a very comfortable presence that really puts others at ease and I also think that there's something about their eyes their eyes could be very bright, maybe expressive. I think that they have this warmth to them. And I feel like their gaze is very like inviting or like reassuring. Again, I do think that they have this ability to make other people feel comfortable and valued. Now, I also feel like they're very charming. They're very, um, I feel like their smile is very infectious. Um, I would say that this person's also probably very well groomed and pretty stylish. Um, I think that their sense of style really reflects that confidence that they have. And I think that this person also has this very youthful energy to them. So um, I don't know what their actual age is, right? But I do think that there's this youthful energy about them, regardless of age. So yeah. I also feel like... Um, in terms of personality traits for your soulmate, I think that they're very, very, um, there's someone that you can see is very satisfied and happy with life, right? This is someone who has a very positive outlook. I think that they know how to find joy in simple pleasures and they know how to appreciate what they have. 
right? They're very warm, they're very generous. Um, I think that they're very kind-hearted. They have a very kind-hearted nature. Um, they're willing to share their happiness, their resources with other people. Um, so I do feel like that warmth does attract people to them naturally. Um, I also feel like your soulmate is someone who probably does enjoy indulging in life's pleasures, or th whether this is good food or music or art or companionship. I just think that they do appreciate the finer things in life and maybe some of you here enjoy the same things too. Um, I do feel like your person is also, again, very competent, very self-assured. I think that this is what adds to that attractiveness to them. Um, they have this really strong knowing of who they are and what they want out of life. Alright, so next we have the Weaver. This one says rediscovery, transition. So I don't know if your soulmate is somebody who you've met before. Maybe this is someone that you're going to rediscover or like run into again. Um, maybe this is someone who has been through some sort of transition. Maybe they're not the same person as they were before. Um, for some of you here, I don't know if you've went to school with them in the past or you've worked with them or you've had some sort of connection with them in the past, maybe. I'm getting that this is not for everyone in this reading, but that for some of you here, this is someone that you knew before or someone that you're about to rediscover, um, someone that's made a lot of changes in their life, right? Um, I also feel like your soulmate's very good with their hands as well. Um, we also have Jean-Michel Basquiat, and this is from the Art Oracles deck. So it has three different pieces of advice, life, work, and then inspiration. So this one says, in lieu of a canvas, find a wall. For work, it says, try collaborating with Andy Warhol. And then the inspiration says, good work can come from bad habits. Interesting. So with this one, right, this artist is known for their very bold and innovative approach to art, right? he was known for his unconventional style. So I feel like in terms of who your soulmate is, I feel like they might use their creativity to challenge traditional boundaries or to explore new forms of expression. I think that this person might have work or some sort of expression that has very like raw emotion to it, maybe personal experiences. Um, th your soulmate has a very deep intellectual depth right? I think they have a deep intellectual curiosity. They know how to dive into different complex themes and ideas, and I do think that they draw inspiration from different sources, whether that's history or literature or culture. Um, I just think whatever work that they're doing or creating or weaving, this is going to be very important work, right? Very meaningful. I also feel like your soulmate's a bit of a rebel, a bit of a provocateur, I think that they are someone who knows how to challenge the status quo. Um, so maybe they challenge societal norms or conventions, you know, maybe they use their work or their art or their creativity to provoke thought and maybe spark conversations about maybe difficult or topics that feel taboo. Your soulmate has this edginess and this grit to them, right? They're not afraid to confront the darker aspects of reality. I also feel like your soulmate here, I think that they're going to be a voice of a generation. I think that whatever they're doing, they are going to resonate with a big audience, you know, particularly for those who feel marginalized or misunderstood. Now, I don't know if your soulmate has had like a complex personal life. Maybe they've been through struggle and triumph, you know, maybe they've, um, been through some sort of personal experience that really deeply affects the way that they express themselves or their art or their creativity or whatever it is, um, I think that this person's pretty open about their vulnerabilities and their challenges. Um, I do think that your soulmate's also very resilient. They're very determined. Um, again, the energy of being very charismatic, very influential, very magnetic, um, and having a really good influence on others. I think that this is the kind of person that will leave a lasting impact on the world and on those around them. We also have the Watcher. This one says Snow Leopard. So with this card, I feel like your soulmate's very observant. They're very perceptive, right? They're very attentive to their surroundings and 
I also feel like your soulmate has a quiet strength. I feel like your soulmate exudes a very quiet strength and um, confidence, you know? I think that they know how to remain composed and resilient even in the face of challenges, right? My apologies, pal. And I also have uh, my dog in here with me and he is like doing the most right now. <laughs> so anyway, we love him. Okay. We also, with the Watcher, I feel like, or with the Snow Leopard, I feel like your soulmate is actually very independent. Maybe even solitary sometimes. I feel like this is someone who values their independence, their autonomy, and they're okay with spending time alone. And I think that they're very self-reliant as well. They're very adaptable. They're patient. And I think that there's this element of like mystery or intrigue to this person. I don't know if you feel like this person's a little bit elusive sometimes, mm -hmm. but very intriguing, very captivating. I also feel like your soulmate has very protective instincts, maybe a little territorial, protective of those that they care about maybe, but I do think that they're very loyal and they're dedicated to their loved ones. Now let's get into how you might come into contact or connection with this loved one. So. The first card that we have here is impasse. This one says reflect and redirect your energy. So pile one, I feel like you might meet your soulmate when you're at a crossroads or when you're like facing significant life changes, maybe a career shift, maybe a move to a new city or some sort of personal transformation. I also think that maybe you meet this person through some sort of reflection or inner work, maybe some sort of like personal growth activity, you know, maybe like um, something that would lead you to some sort of situation or place where you would encounter your soulmate. I think that, um, something about like when you do the inner work is when this person's going to show up for those of you who haven't met this person already. I'm also sensing that for some of you in this pile, you already know who your soulmate is or you're with them. Um, so maybe you're just looking for, uh, like little bits of confirmation. So, um, I also feel like the way or the manner in which you might come into connection with your soulmate is maybe through like an unexpected encounter, right? Like maybe you meet them when you weren't like focused on finding a soulmate. Maybe you met them unexpected, unexpectedly. Um, maybe you meet them in like a new environment, maybe some sort of location that's different or somewhere where you wouldn't normally frequent like a new workplace a club, a bar, a different neighborhood, or some sort of destination that you travel to. I'll tell you a really funny story. Um, it's not funny. I'll just tell you a, a neat story. Okay, so I met my partner in a very unexpected place and a very unusual place. Um, I went out one night with a friend that I don't typically go out with, and I went out with some friends that I t don't typically go out with, and uh, we went to this bar, which I don't typically frequent a lot of bars. Um, and I think I was just like waiting for my friends outside and that's how I met my husband. I literally ran into him outside and we had seen each other around town before and, um, kind of just started to chat outside and the rest is history. So, and it's funny because I was never going to go out that night. I was like, I'm not feeling it. I'm tired. I'm not going to go out, but I was like, whatever. I don't want to, you know, bail out on my friends. So I'm going to go. Um, so yeah, unusual, unexpected place. Surprise. I feel like that's the element here for this pile. Um, we also have transition. This one says cauliflower. I love that you have multiple like transition, transition, impasse, a lot of change, a lot of transitionary energy here, which is great. Um, this is cancer energy here. So I don't know if some of you have a the sign of cancer somewhere significant in your birth chart. Maybe this is the sign, maybe your soulmate has cancer somewhere significant in their birth chart. And if not, then this is just the energy at play here. Cancering is very nurturing, protective, loving, um, very emotionally intelligent. They are very, very intuitive. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I do feel like, again, you might meet your soulmate in a place of change, right? Maybe if you're in a new city or if you change careers or start some sort of new personal project, I feel like your paths are going to cross at 
some sort of point when you navigate these changes. Um, maybe you meet your soulmate at like a transformative event, right? Like something to do with like personal growth or transformation, maybe a workshop or a retreat or a seminar, right? Something to do with like self-improvement. I think that this is what's going to lead you to your soulmate, at least for some of you. Um, yeah, something to do with like attracting someone who's in a state of transition or like someone who's seeking new direction in their lives. Um, You know, it's interesting. Earlier I said maybe this is someone you knew before or this is someone that you are rediscovering. And with this card, I'm thinking like transition, like reinvention, personal reinvention, right? I don't know if you or your soulmate are in the process of like reinventing themselves or pursuing a new passion or embarking on a new journey. But I do think that you're going to create a very strong connection that's based on this mutual understanding of change or transition or transformation. Um, some of you here might meet your soulmate at like school, college, a class, a workshop, in a support group too. I, I kept feeling that maybe AA for some of you, not all of you. Um, maybe volunteering or like community projects or maybe like a social or networking event. We also have the quail and gooseberry anticipation. So this one, I think that for some of you here, you might be meeting your soulmate in a setting where both of you are like eagerly anticipating something, right? Maybe this is like the post office or maybe this is um, somewhere where you can be excited about like an event or a project or some sort of shared experience. Maybe a concert, a show, festival, something. Um, I also feel like you could be meeting them in like a place of waiting or preparation, maybe like the DMV. Uh, guys, spirit just starts throwing things out, so <laughs> I'm just the messenger. Um, I'm always like the DMV, but hey, if your soulmate's in the DMV, you go. I also feel like, again, there's this element of meeting your soulmate in a very like serendipitous or unexpected way, maybe like some sort of seemingly random situation. There's a bit of like spontaneity and surprise. With the encounter. Dang, my dog must be excited about your soulmate because he just keeps moving around. So I just want to point out that I think that for some of you here too, you might be meeting that soulmate through travel or some sort of adventure setting. Um, maybe exploring new places or experiences could bring you together. And then we have our super attractor affirmation card. This one says, feeling good will bring me far more than whatever I thought I needed. I'm feeling like this very strong pull to like talk about kind of like that idea of like not judging a book by its cover like maybe sometimes we think we need a certain type of person or a person to look a certain way and when you allow yourself to be surprised and when you allow yourself to be open to people's energy and, and their personality and their intentions and their inner um their inner beauty sometimes it's not as important as what they look like um, on the outside as the way that they make you feel on the inside so that's the message that I'm getting with that um, let's pull some tea leaf fortune cards to get any additional information that you might need to know for highest and best good okay we have happiness flowers I keep hearing you're going to get your flowers, pile one. Ooh, you got some flyers. Okay. <clears throat> you have mice, discord amongst among friends and family. You have star, guaranteed success. You have candle. You will soon be shown the way. You also have Haystack, Karma, you will reap what you have sown. Ooh. Okay, we have Chain, Chain of Events that will affect your life. We have Parrot, someone will gossip about all of your secrets. And then we also have <coughs> Lobster, Financial Pinch. Okay. So for some of you here, 
maybe you've either dealt with discord amongst friends or family or maybe this is something to do with what i was sp speaking about earlier about how your soulmate might have had a complex upbringing or a complex personal life um maybe they're working out some family karma maybe some of you here are doing that clearing out like clearing out low vibrational financial trauma ending financial cycles with the parrot card i think that this could be a time where um you keep things private right you keep some of the um things that you're working through and processing maybe you keep this private and this is not to say like don't reach out to friends and family if you need support or like it's not to say don't reach out to a therapist or a counselor if you need that support but i think this speaks more to like it's not necessarily like trauma dumping but it's like um you know when we're in that cycle of complaining like when we're really not feeling good and sometimes the only thing that we feel like action to do is to grumble or complain or to kind of talk about how unfortunate our circumstances are and sometimes when we do that and we just you know grumble amongst our friends and family then that cycle just continues and continues because sometimes then our friends and family they're either concerned or it just comes up in another conversation and then that energy is just perpetuated so i think that maybe this is the month where you're working on things in private um i also feel like your personal healing journey might be something that you prefer to work on in private and i feel like this is a guaranteed success you're going to get your flowers you're going to find happiness right i feel like good karma is on the way too you're going to get out and for those of you who are in a financial pinch you're going to get out of it don't worry this is just part of the chain of events of like it's just like what do they say it's just a small chapter of the whole story and if you're going through it right now just know that there are brighter times on the horizon you will be shown the way okay so thank you so much pile one i hope that that was fun i hope that that was helpful please give this video a like if it resonates it really does help the channel comment below with what pile you chose i do love to chat with you all in the comments thank you um subscribe if you haven't already take care of yourself i do hope to see you on the next video after this i have a playlist with a ton of pick a card readings everything from topics on love relationships career money manifestation spirituality all of the fun things friendship so yes um <clears throat> so yeah check it out it's on my channel i have a playlist with a bunch of long form pick a card readings as well as short form pick a card readings as well um but yeah but if not this time i'll see you on the next reading bye pile one hi pile two welcome to your reading now let's dive in okay so pile two the first card that you have here is the world cosmos for the world you also have the puppeteer this one says explanations apologies you also have Sonia Telone you have links secrets you also have crossing bridges this one says it's time for healing connecting mending and releasing And then you also have Refinement, Dahlia. And then you have the Salamander and Black Pepper, Inspiration. And you also have I Believe I'm Worthy of Feeling Good. And then just an overview, Pile 2. The top row of cards is going to be all about what your soulmate looks like, their personality traits, and their energy. And then the bottom row here is going to be how you might meet them or how you might come into contact with them. Let's start out with the world cosmos. This is the world. So in terms of their physical appearance, I'm thinking that your soulmate is someone who's very graceful and poised. I think that this person carries themselves with this energy. They have a very confident demeanor. And I think that they have this element of like accomplishment and mastery. So maybe they've accomplished or mastered um, many things in life. 
right? I also think that they have a very beautiful aura about them, a very radiant one, one that really does glow success and fulfillment, right? So I don't know if they just have this overall very magnetic presence, but I also feel like their facial features are very balanced. So I think that they're very like symmetrical. They're probably very attractive pile too. Um, and I think that there's this very like serene expression on their face. I think that there's a lot of inner peace within them. Um, again, I do feel like they have this confidence, but especially in their eyes, their eyes are very clear and confident. I think that their eyes are very like reassuring and very captivating at the same time. Um, I also feel like there's this element of elegance to this person. So I think that maybe their clothing choices are very tasteful. Maybe they're very sophisticated. Um, it commands respect is what I'm feeling. And I think that despite how much they've accomplished and achieved so far, I think that they still have this very like young, youthful energy, right? So I think that this can be seen in their like posture, the way they move, right? And their overall energy. Um, and then I also feel like maybe this person, like in terms of their appearance, maybe they they incorporate some sort of like multicultural or like globally influenced style. Like I feel like they have this connection to maybe cultural or like diverse experiences and perspectives. So um, that's a specific message for some of you here. Um, in terms of personality traits, I do feel like this person, again, they've either achieved or they've accomplished a lot. So therefore, I feel like they have this very deep sense of like fulfillment in their life. I think that they've mastered a lot of things. They've reached a lot of significant milestones. Um, I think that they're very well rounded. I think that they um, have finally figured out a way to like successfully integrate and incorporate work and relationships and hobbies and personal growth into one big harmonious whole. I also feel like they understand the importance of balance and they do strive for that in everything that they do. Um, this person has a lot of wisdom pile too. I think that they have been through a lot of completions of like various stages of their journey and so they do have this very deep wisdom and this very deep understanding of the complexities of life. Right? So I do think that this person's very insightful. They have a very interesting perspective. You can probably come to this person for guidance as well. Um, I do think that this person, again, there's this like element of, I'm sorry, pile two. And I apologize to pile one also. I keep my dog in here for my readings. If I put him outside of the room, he literally will jump around and be crazy. So I keep him, I keep him in here and he usually chills, but today he is on one. He's like, I don't know what it is. Have you guys been feeling that energy lately? Or have your animals been feeling that energy? Ah! There he goes. Give me a second pile too. I feel like your soulmate has a very broad awareness on like global issues, right? Cultures, diversity. I think they know how to show respect for different viewpoints and they have this desire to contribute very positively to the world. Um, I also feel like your person is very joyous. They love to celebrate things. They love to appreciate life's achievements and milestones with gratitude, right? And positivity. We also have the puppeteer here. This one says explanations and apologies. So right off the bat, I feel like this person is someone who likes to communicate, right? And maybe they weren't the best communicator in the past, but and maybe they have some apologies to make to you, but for those of you who, who have known this person already is what I'm hearing, um, maybe they have some explanations to share with you. Um, but I also feel like this person, like beyond that, I think that they are a great communicator or they're working on being a great communicator. They can explain very intricate ideas and emotions in ways that other people can easily understand, right? They're very like articulate. I think they're very precise in their speech is what I'm feeling. I think that your soulmate has a very strong ability to be an empathetic listener. They know how to understand the feelings and viewpoints of other people, right? And so this allows them to respond to others thoughtfully and appropriately in conversations, right? Whether they're addressing things like misunderstandings or conflicts. Um, I also feel like there's someone who's very conscientious, right? There's someone who is aware of the impact that their words and their actions have on others. And this self-awareness it really makes them very responsible and very considerate in their everyday interactions. 
your soulmate's a natural problem solver. I think that they're very trustworthy as well. Um, so, yes. So the next card that we have here is Sonia Delone. And the this comes from the Art Oracles deck. I have all of these decks from all these cards linked for you in the description if you're interested in getting your hands on a copy. But um, these Art Oracles, they have three different pieces of advice. One for life, work, and then inspiration. So for life, this one says, don't live to 94 without founding an art movement. For work, it says the practical should also be art. And for inspiration, it says, does your geometry lack poetry? Interesting. I don't know if your soulmate was a smoker, is a smoker. That is just for a specific some of you, though. I'm hearing that's not for everyone here. I also feel like your your person has a very nice physique, too. Like, their body. Yeah, they have a nice body. Okay. Um... <clears throat> But yes, I feel like with Sonia here, I feel like your soulmate is very inventive. They're very original. Um, they're forward thinking. They're a trendsetter, right? I think that they have this very like energetic presence. They're very lively and dynamic and they bring energy and enthusiasm into everything that they do. I also feel like, especially because we're talking about Sonia Delone, your soulmate definitely has a lot of versatile skills. So um, this artist worked across things like painting, textile design, fashion, and so I think that your soulmate probably has a wide range of talents and interests here. Um, I also feel like your soulmate is someone who's a team player, so they thrive in environments where they can collaborate. and. Um, they're very much a communi community oriented person. So I know like with pile one, I was like, Ooh, maybe, maybe your person's a little bit more reclusive with this one. I feel like this could be someone who is a little bit more, um, who, who likes to be in their community. Right. Um, again, I do feel like your soulmate is someone who has this cultural sensitivity. They have this very deep appreciation for different cultures. I think that your soulmate knows how to actually draw inspiration from different diverse sources as well. Yeah. Your soulmate also has an eye for beauty and this attention to detail. Now we also have secrets. This one says links. So with this card, um, I, right away, I feel like your soulmate is someone who's very intuitive. They're very perceptive. They can sense things that other people miss. Um, they know how to read between the lines. And I think that they also know how to understand like hidden meanings or motivations. Your soulmate maybe is discreet. And I think they're also trustworthy. Um, I think that they're also very observant and detail oriented. And I also feel like they have this element of like being very calm and like mysterious, right? Your soulmate has like a very rich, um, complex inner world. So I don't know if they come across as like mysterious, um, but I feel like they have this energy that really draws people in. Um, and yeah, I, I, I just feel again, they're very um, protective. They're very wise. Um, and I think that people actually would seek them out if they need guidance or some sort of viewpoint or some sort of different perspective. Now, we are in the part of the reading where we start talking about, um, and this is the bottom row that we're talking about here, we start talking about how you'll come into contact or how you'll come into connection with your soulmate. Uh, and for those of you who have already come into contact with your soulmate, maybe some of these are clarifiers. Um, remember, general reading, take what resonates, leave what doesn't. But we have crossing bridges here. So this one says it's time for healing, connecting, mending, and releasing. So I feel like you might come into contact or come into connection with your soulmate um, through like healing or personal growth activities, right? So maybe you're focused on personal development or therapy or like meditation retreats or some sort of self-improvement workshop. Um, and for those of you who are actually interested in all of that type of stuff, I do have a podcast called the That's Deep Podcast. I have it linked for you in the description. I talk about a lot of different things as it has to do with personal development and self-discovery. I talk about all the different tools that you can use to leverage your skills and leverage your inner talents, right? So I talk about Myers-Briggs personality types. Um, for those of you who know your personality type, specifically your Myers-Briggs personality type, let me know in the comments. I'm always so curious to find out who else 
um, is watching these readings. I am an INFJ in the Myers-Briggs system, so I'm an introvert, intuitive, I have the feeling function and the judging function. So yeah, I've already um, seen a couple uh, INFJs comment below, and so thank you guys so much. Um, and yeah, for all of you who know your personality type, drop it down below. If you don't know, drop me a comment too. I can um, send you guys a link to one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite personality type like test. And it's quick and it's free and um, I found that it's probably one of the more accurate tests. So yeah, let me know. Drop me a comment. But um, I also talk about things like spirituality. I talk about um, astrology, your birth chart, the Enne Enneagram, so many different things. So um, I have a, a bunch of play. I mean, I have a bunch of interviews with people of various different personality types, different signs, um, and stories of empowerment, stories of entrepreneurship, stories of um, triumph. So definitely check it out if you're interested or you feel called. Okay, so back to how you might come into connection with this person. So yeah, maybe you meet your soulmate during like some sort of transitional position, maybe like a change in your career or your living situation or your personal life. I also feel like you could, some of you here could be meeting your soulmate in some sort of like supportive community or a group. So I think that you could meet your soulmate in maybe like a support group or a spiritual community, right? Or volunteer work, that kind of thing. Something that's focused on healing and helping other people. Uh, maybe some of you here meet them at a workshop or a seminar, you know? Maybe you meet them in some sort of therapeutic or counseling setting. Maybe you meet them at some sort of spiritual or a healing retreat, right? Maybe you meet them in some sort of artistic or creative space, right? Maybe you, maybe you meet them during some sort of moment of vulnerability. That's what I'm getting from crossing bridges. We also have refinement here. This one says Dahlia. We have Scorpio energy here. So I don't know if your soulmate has a, um, significant Scorpio placement somewhere in their birth chart. Maybe you do, or this could just be the energy at play here. And Scorpio is actually very, um, they can be very mysterious. They're very deep, magnetic. Um, they're like the alchemist of the, the, the Zodiac. So yeah, deep work, deep work, deep, rich inner world. Um, I also f feel like maybe some of you might meet your soulmate at some sort of like cultural event or some sort of like artistic event like I spoke about earlier, maybe like an artistic exhibition or like a music concert or theater, some sort of something that has to do with like literary stuff, um, any sort of setting that refines, that reflects some sort of like refined taste. Ooh, some of you here could also be meeting your soulmate in some sort of like elegant social setting. So like a charity gala, maybe an upscale dinner party or an elegant networking event, right? Something as it has to do with attracting individuals who value that refinement and have a little bit more high standards. Um, I also feel like maybe some of you here will meet your partner through your intellectual pursuits, maybe like college, higher education, research institutions, those kind of things, right? Something as it has to do where it's like a think tank for knowledge, right? Um, maybe some of you here meet your soulmate through collaborations. I'm also feeling like culture, like cultural hotspots is what I'm feeling. Paris, Milan, New York, it's places that are like sophisticated and have this very deep richness and like cultural ris richness is what I'm feeling. Maybe even like an exclusive club or some sort of society. That is what I'm feeling. Very fancy pile too. You also have the salamander and black pepper. This one says inspiration. So again, think you might meet your soulmate through some sort of creative pursuit, right? Some sort of like inspiration driven event, maybe a workshop again, a motivational speaking situation, right? Um, maybe even like an unconventional or unique situation. Like maybe you meet them in an unexpected way. Uh, maybe you go out on like some spontaneous adventure or some sort of situations that push you out of your comfort zone. Uh, maybe even meets your soulmate through like a moment of inspiration. And then some of you here, I feel like you might meet your soulmate through like travel or exploration. 
that sense of like adventure and openness I feel like this really is going to open you up to like have these very meaningful connections now we also have our super attractor card here this one says I believe I'm worthy of feeling good so I feel like what this means is like when you're feeling good when you're feeling worthy of love that's when love will be reflected back to you right so when you feel like you're worthy of meeting your partner or worthy of meeting your soulmate that's when your soulmate appears right when you feel like I'm not enough I've got to do more I've got to change myself I've got to do this and this and this to meet this person that is when we're reflecting something else right we're not reflecting that we're worthy of feeling good we're reflecting like we need to do more right and that's not the case I so I, I really think that a lot of you here might be focusing on doing the inner work shadow work for some of you here focusing on feeling worthy of love feeling worthy of feeling good feeling worthy of being in communication or connection with your soulmate and that's when the magic appears it comes from within so yes let's also pull a I would love to pull some tea leaf fortune cards pile too to get more information on what you need to know for your highest and best good. We have bread, period of prosperity and abundance, cat, two faced friend. We also have axe, forces working against you. We have um, desk, pay attention to your work. We also have staff who will be taken care of in difficult times. You have hills, obstacles to overcome. And then you have bow, you are highly thought of. And then you also have stork, news of a birth or business opportunity. Very exciting pile two. Pile two. So um, right off the bat, um, for those of you who feel like maybe you have someone in your circle that you can't trust or someone that you're in connection with that you can't trust, maybe you feel like they're working against you, maybe it's time to trust that intuition. I think that cats are very, very intuitive, very discerning. What's interesting here too is we have, um, the Lynx card, right? This is secret. So... I don't know if maybe this is a sign to like keep some of your ideas or your secrets or uh, personal information to yourself, right? Maybe to be a little bit more discerning. It's not to say that you can't be open or loving or trusting, right? But at the same time, it's important to you your discernment skills. And um, yeah, I think it's like, I keep feeling like it's, it's like that tall poppy syndrome, right? Um, when you're growing, when you're, when you're, you're shooting above the stars right it's like you're more visible but then when you're more visible sometimes the other flowers around you that haven't grown as much kind of look at you like hey you know so I think that you're growing pile too and so just make sure that you have your boundaries you're just you know you're using your discernment and um yeah otherwise like very very positive you're very highly thought of I feel I keep hearing like you're loved by the masses any sort of obstacle that you feel like you have to overcome, you will, because you will be taken care of in difficult times. You're on your way into a period of prosperity but prosperity and abundance. And um, I think when you pay attention to your work, you are going to have some sort of news of a birth or a new business opportunity. So really, really exciting pile too. I know this is a love reading, but I love it when like we get news about like you're going to get more money or you're going to have more success in some way. So and then we love that you're highly thought of. Maybe your soulmate either thinks of you very highly or they're, you know, when you're in connection with them, they're going to think of you very, very highly. Maybe your soulmate's rich too. They got that rich energy here. Lots of abundance. So love this for you, pile two. Thank you so much. Please give this video a like, big thumbs up if it resonates. It really does help the channel. Comment below with what pile you chose because you know I love to talk with you all in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Take care of yourself. I do hope to see you on the next video after this. I have a playlist, so be sure to go and check out my channel, Title Tarot. Look for the playlist, and I have a bunch of different pick-a-card readings on there for you to explore. Everything from money, career, relationships, love, magic, spirituality, manifestation, all of those fun things. So, thank you so much. If I don't see you on the next video, I'll see you back next time. Bye, Pile 2.
Hi, Pile 3. Welcome to your reading. Now let's dive in. Okay, so Pile 3. First card that you have here is the Four of Wands. You also have the Cartographer. This one says a crossroads explanation. Oh, excuse me, exploration. So this one, you have Michelangelo. You have Equality Seahorse. You also have Unknown Territory. You are exactly where you need to be. You also have Positivity. This one says Marigold. And then you also have the Elk and Ash. This one says Strength. Then you also have a super, act a super Attractor Affirmation card. This one says, the more I attune my energy with appreciation, the more the universe will deliver. Okay, guys, so today before we dive into the reading, I just want to explain that the top row is going to be all about your soulmate's um, physical appearance, their personality, their energy, and then the bottom row here is all about how you'll meet them or how you'll come into contact with them. Okay. So let's dive in. So the first card that we have here is the Four of Wands. In terms of their physical appearance, I feel like your soulmate has a very joyful expression, Pile 3. I feel like their faces really light up with happiness, and I feel like it really reflects the inner joy or that satisfaction that they feel. I feel like your soulmate also has a little bit more of like a relaxed or like an open body language so when you look at them I think that they appear very relaxed and at ease they have like an open welcoming body language you know so I think that this really reflects how they're feeling inside which is like harmonious and they're feeling contentment right so I also feel like your soulmate something to do with their clothing like they dress very elegantly or very festive I think that maybe they wear a lot of colors or like a lot of accessories um, and their energy, man, it's super radiant, right? I feel like their aura, um, it just exudes this amazing positive energy, Pile 3, this enthusiasm. I feel like they're very uplifting and they create this very lively atmosphere. I also feel like your soulmate has kind of this glow of achievement, like, about them. I don't know if it's their posture, or, like, their demeanor, or the way they carry themselves, but I feel like you have a soulmate that's actually very successful, Pile 3. Um, I also feel like your soulmate is very connected with others. I think they have very strong connections, very strong social and support networks. So, like, I think that maybe they're surrounded by friends and family and loved ones, right? Um, I also, I keep seeing, like, this person celebrating. Like, I don't know if they love toasting or dancing or, like, interacting with others. I just feel like they love a good time, life of the party. Um, yeah, as far as their personality traits go with the Four of Wands, again, I feel like they're very joyful, they like to celebrate, they're balanced, they're harmonious, I think they're very much community-oriented, like we spoke about earlier, they have a very strong sense of community, they like being part of social gatherings and events and groups and that kind of thing. Um, I also feel like this person has a very creative and free spirit. Right, so I think that they love to like express themselves, or maybe they like art, or maybe um, cultural activities, or maybe like organizing events that bring people together. I feel like your soulmate has a knack for creating very memorable experiences for others. Um, I also see them as a leader as well. We do have the cartographer card, so this one is. Um, so this card says a crossroads exploration so in terms of your soulmates like personality or their energy i feel like they have a very adventurous spirit so i think they have a very strong desire to either explore new places or ideas or opportunities i feel like they thrive on discovering some sort of like uncharted territory and i think this is the kind of person that's always seeking um new experiences now i also feel like with the cartographer here, your soulmate's very, very adept at making big decisions. I think they know how to like carefully weigh out their options and they're often guided by their intuition and their strategic mindset. So it's a nice balance between the intuition and the logic. 
Another thing with this card here, I feel like your soulmate's very, very curious, right? I keep hearing like insatiable curiosity. I think they're always asking questions. They're always wanting to understand the world around them. Um, and I really do think that they enjoy learning and they're constantly expanding their knowledge. Um, again, I, I want to say that this person's definitely a leader. I feel like they can guide their own path, but they can help others to navigate their own paths too. And this is someone who knows how to offer insights and advice and support to people who want direction, right? I also feel like your soulmate's very goal-oriented, right? They're independent. They're very resilient. I think that they're great problem solvers. And so for some of you here, I don't know if your soulmate like works in the industry of like travel writing or travel blogging. I don't know if they're interested in like exploring or research science maybe like urban planning and maybe architecture. I'm also feeling the energy of like an entrepreneur here too, but for some of you here, maybe like life coach, career counselor, something else that has to do with like guiding others through their, their professional or personal crossroads, maybe even a therapist or a counselor or like some sort of strategy consultant, business consultant. Yeah. We also have the Michelangelo card here. We've got three different pieces of advice, one for life, work, and then inspiration. So for life, it says no compromise is a good compromise. For work, it says blemished origins do not negate flawless conclusions. And for inspiration, it says become ill with unhealthy perfectionism. Um, Interesting. Sorry, I just like when I'm looking at this card, I'm like, is your soulmate somebody that you are out of touch with? Or maybe you once were out of touch with them? I feel like I see these two hands like trying to touch each other but they're like a little out of touch that could just be for a specific some of you here um I feel like your soulmate they really have this deep well of creativity so I don't know if they would excel in fields that require some sort of artistic skill as well like painting or sculpture or architecture I do think that your soulmate's very innovative as it comes to their thinking they really do push their bound the boundaries of their craft I also think that what they create is both like very groundbreaking and timeless. I think that this person's also very much um, in the pursuit of excellence. They're really good at overcoming challenges. I feel like they have a very multifaceted talent is what I'm feeling. Cause like Michelangelo, right? He's a, he's a painter and a sculptor and an architect and a poet, right? So I feel like your soulmate has like a range of skills and interest maybe across multiple disciplines too. But I really do feel like they have this energy of like mastery of technique, right? So if your soulmate's a tennis player, maybe they've mastered their technique, right? Again, I'm feeling that energy too of like, they're a very influential leader. They're very forward thinking. They might have this like deep connection to the divine too. Cause I feel like Michelangelo's work, it often depicted spiritual themes, right? Higher ideals, spiritual concepts. But yeah, I do think that your soulmate is somebody that people respect. They respect their authority. This person has definitely earned a lot of respect and admirations from their peers and audiences. Um, we also have the seahorse card. This one says equality. Right off the bat, I feel like your soulmate and you are going to be an equal pair, right? There's not like one person that's running the show and the other person that's supporting. It's like you both are going to have equal autonomy, equal power. Um, I do feel like also with this, in terms of your soulmate's personality, I feel like they have this commitment to fairness. So maybe they have a strong sense of justice or they really strive to ensure that everybody is treated equally and fairly. I feel like they have this deep sense of empathy too. Like they're sensitive to the needs and experiences of people from different backgrounds, right? Um, I also think that this person's very much an active listener. They're really good at like conflict resolution too, is what I'm feeling. Um, but I, yeah, I think they have a very collaborative spirit. They're very respectful to all. Maybe this person's very much like a champion of human rights. Yeah. A lot of emotional intelligence. I keep hearing too, like they're going to be a good parent. I always think about like seahorses and their babies. For those of you who are interested in having kids, not for everyone, but that's a specific message for those of you who that resonates with. 
um, let's get into the part of the reading where we talk about how you'll come into contact with your soulmate. So we have unknown territory. This one says you are exactly where you need to be. Um, again, I feel like your soulmate's very wise with the owl here, right? Very, very wise. Um, but back to how you'll come into contact or connection with them, I feel like your meeting is going to be very spontaneous, very serendipitous, right? So maybe it happens during some sort of... So maybe you meet your soulmate in some sort of unplanned event, or maybe you're pursuing something new or out of your usual routine. Um, this is similar to, I think, what I spoke about in Pile 1. So if you were drawn to um, Pile 1, you might want to check that reading out. You might have some messages for you in there. But I share a story about how I met my partner, my soulmate, and um, how the meeting was very spontaneous, very serendipitous, and very much like unplanned. And um, it was in a place where I usually don't go with people that I don't even go out with typically. And um, the rest is history, man. You know, over a, more than a decade later. So anywho, okay. I also feel like you might meet your soulmate in like an unconventional setting, maybe something that's a little out of your comfort zone. I also feel like, again, with like, especially with the cartographer here in a map, I think that you probably, some of you here will meet your uh, soulmate through some sort of like exploration or adventure, maybe in some sort of activity that, again, pushes you outside of your comfort zone. Maybe you travel to a new place or you take up a new hobby or you attend some sort of unusual event that might lead you to your soulmate. Like for example, just speaking of unusual events, I remember one time in college, I went to like this really strange, like, I don't know if it's like a magic show. It was a very interesting random thing that like I would have never gone, but my friends were like, let's go. So we went and I remember I like entered some random raffle that I was like, well, I don't really care about it. I won like an iPod at the time. And I was just like, whoa, like that's crazy. Like that's amazing. Very um, unusual event that I've attended and yet some, somehow got lucky there so anyway that's what I'm feeling for you like it's gonna be some sort of like something you don't expect and you're gonna be pleasantly surprised yeah um, maybe for some of you here you might meet your soulmate in some sort of like creative or artistic space um, gallery opening a performance something where you're immersed in creativity um, maybe you, some of you here meet your soulmate through like community work volunteer work I think this is where you can meet other people that share your values, especially as it has to do with like serving others, serving your community. Ooh, I'm also feeling like big time. For some of you here, you may meet your partner online. That's unusual, right? That's different. Um, or on social media. Or like, I don't know if you meet them through some sort of niche or some sort of like unique interest. I keep hearing soul family too, like they're not, they're not just soulmate, they're soul family to you too. Yeah. Um, we also have positivity. This one says marigold. We have Leo energy here. So maybe your soulmate has Leo somewhere significant in their birth chart. Maybe you have Leo somewhere significant in your birth chart, or this could just be the energy at play here. Leo is very much a leader. They're very magnetic. Um, they, uh, radiate a lot of warmth. Um, they're vibrant. There's so many things, right? But yeah, I do think in terms of where you'll come into connection or where you'll meet your soulmate, maybe you'll meet them in a setting that feels very joyful or happy or like positive, right? So maybe like a festival or like a social gathering where everyone's in high spirits. Um, I also feel like, again, it could be through some sort of shared interest. So like community events or volunteering or some sort of positive cause. Um, I do feel like, again, there's this energy of like creative or artistic venues, art galleries, theater performances, creative workshops, right? Maybe even for some of you here, you meet them in some sort of like outdoor activity or like a wellness activity, maybe like yoga, hiking in nature, maybe some sort of health focused retreat through shared experiences, spontaneous adventures. I also feel like you're going to be laughing a lot together. Like there's a lot of laughter and lightheartedness here and it's going to create this instant bond between you two. So maybe like a comedy show or a playful activity or something that brings out your natural joy. I just see lots of laughter between you. 
what a like sorry what an uplifting connection i love this pile three um we also have the elk and ash this one says strength so i don't know if for some of you here you meet them like through some sort of challenging situation some sort of personal situation where strength and resilience are required from you maybe some of you here meet through some sort of shared goal or ambition like for some of you here like if you're a youtuber right maybe you meet another youtuber and you both have shared goals and ambitions i think this will bring you together for some of you here too maybe it's again through like wellness or fitness being outdoors being in nature i also think for some of you here you might come into connection with your soulmate at work in some sort of professional setting conferences workshops industry events right or again maybe in some sort of supportive role mentorship coaching something like that we also have our super attractor card this one says the more i attune my energy with appreciation the more the universe will deliver so i don't know if you've ever heard of the vibrational scale i don't know if it's esther hicks or louise hay it's one of the two um but they have a vibrational scale all the way from like low vibrational stuff right hate anger grief all that kind of stuff and then shooting up to the top love gratitude appreciation those kinds of things and so i think this talks about where we're tuning ourselves it doesn't mean that we can't feel what we're actually feeling right so if we're upset doesn't mean we can't be upset doesn't mean we can't sit with those feelings and process them but when we're done right when we're ready to move on and choose something different choose a different vibration this one asks that you choose a higher vibration what right what did i learn from that what can i be grateful for what can I choose for myself? What do I want to create and how do I step into that? So I do think that it's interesting. Like, I feel like you're going to meet your soulmate when you're tuned in, right, to a specific frequency or like you're tuned in to the right radio station, right? Hope that makes sense, pal. Three. The next thing here I would love to do is I would love to, oops, whoa. I would love to pull some tea leaf fortune cards to get any additional information that you might need to know for your highest and best good today. So we have Cracked Cup, Dissatisfaction with Life. You have Scissors, Disappointment in Some Affair. You also have Coins. This one says Money will be coming to you. Love that. We had the Green Adventuring Crystal right there. All about money, all about attracting more money. So money will be coming to you, love it. Um, for those of you who are interested in getting your hands on any of these crystals, I do have an online shop. Check it out in the description below if you're interested. I have a bunch of different crystals, crystal jewelry, and then non-crystal jewelry as well, as well as self-care items. You have diamond, you'll be receiving or giving a precious gift. You have younger man, dealings or relationship with a younger man. We have fair woman, dealings or relationship with a woman with blonde, gray, or white hair. And then you also have skull, hidden secrets can harm you. Um, and then we have um, four leaf clover, great good fortune. Oh, I love this pile three. I was saying to pile two that like, cause they had stuff about money in the end also. And I was like, I know this is a love reading, but I love it when you get information about like you're gonna get some extra coins you're gonna get some more money right we love that so um let's start here for those of you who have feel have been feeling dissatisfied with life right maybe you've been disappointed with some affair maybe you've been disappointed with your your love interest or what's been going on right maybe some of you have been having dealings or relationships with a younger man maybe some of you have been having dealings or relationships with a fair woman right or this could be some characteristics of your future soulmate as well, right? Maybe for some of you here, for example, you date a younger man. Or for some of you here, you end up with a fair woman, right? These could be some descriptors of some of you out here too. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Um, interesting with the skull here, this one says hidden secrets can harm you. And then we have it on the strength card where we talked about um, through adversity comes strength, right? So maybe with your partner... This is a sign to like, or this is a sign that you know you can be open. You don't have to hide your secrets from them. You don't have to hide your past. They're going to be very open and accepting and bring you in with open arms. And then with everything else, pile three, you're going to be getting some money. Expect some money to be coming to you shortly. Expect gifts. 
Ooh, is your soulmate going to be spoiling you with like money and gifts? Either way, you guys are going to have great good fortune. And I love, love, love this. Thank you so much, Pile 3. I hope that this reading helps. I hope it resonates. Please give this a big thumbs up if you like the video. Comment below with what pal you chose because you know I love to talk with you all in the comments. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. That way you can see the next video the moment it drops. Take care of yourself. I do hope to see you on the next reading after this. Check out my channel, Title Tarot. I have a bunch of pick a card readings for you to explore. Everything from money, career, love, relationships, manifestation, spirituality, all of the things. So, if not this time, I'll see you back on the next video. Bye, Pile 3. Hi, Pile 4. Welcome to your reading. Now let's dive in. Okay, so Pile 4. The first card that you have here is the world. You also have the witch, experimentation, rebellion. You also have tarantula, connection. You also have solitude. This one says in silence, peace prevails. You have love, tomato. And then you have the ram and dahlia, determination. And then you also have I accept that good things come easily. I am a super attractor. But okay, so with the world here, we have Alice and um, is it Dinah? Is that the name of the cat? But um, this comes from the Alice in Wonderland tarot deck. Super fun tarot deck. In fact, I have the, um, it's the pile that you chose earlier. Aren't these cards stunning? So stunning hope you can see that I'm not even checking if it's um, out of focus or not but so stunning so oh if you guys want to get your hands oh my god Maybe there's a reason why the hierophant has to be here because the hierophant almost burnt on fire so we'll leave her there too um, but yeah if you guys want to get your hands on this deck or any of the other um, decks from the cards that you see here today. I have that all linked for you in the description of this video, but let's dive in. So all about your soulmate, pile one. Because we have an extra card here, because we have the Hierophant, um, this one's making me feel like your soulmate is a bit of a traditionalist. They're structured in some way. They, they, um, I don't know if they've like worked in an institution, maybe a school, a church, you know, a college, um, something with a lot of order and, you know, structure and rules and, um, I feel like maybe there's a lot of knowledge, like your soulmate is the keeper of knowledge in some way. They're very wise. Maybe other people come to them for wise counsel, right? This was, this was the person that was giving Alice all of the, like, advice in the movie, if you can remember in the beginning, um, or this was Alice's teacher, right? So... I wonder if your soulmate has that kind of energy as well. But when I look at the world here and I think about um, your person's personality and looks and overall energy. Oh, yeah. So I forgot to let you know that the top row is going to be your person's personality, looks, um, their energy. And then the bottom is going to be how you might come into contact with them. Now, remember, for those of you who have already found your soulmate and you're just listening to this as a fun reading or something as a little confirmer, um, remember, you have free will. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. This is a general reading. So, yes. Okay. Um, but with the world, um, I'm thinking that as far as the looks and the personality and the overall energy go, I feel like your soulmate has a very radiant and healthy glow, pile four. Like, I feel, I don't know if their skin, like, there's something about their skin. Their skin is on point. It's very clear, luminous. Like, I just feel like this person is, um, Whatever their inner world is like, it reflects on the outer world, if that makes sense. I also feel like they have probably like a very serene and like balanced expression on their face. So maybe, maybe they have very harmonious like facial features or maybe something about their face conveys that inner sense of peace and contentment that they have. Um, I'm also feeling, I'm also being drawn to their eyes, pile four. So I think that, um, I keep hearing like kind eyes. Like, if you notice, everyone in here, and everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of the characters 
um, that we have here in our reading so far. Like they all have a very soft, gentle, nurturing gaze. So I wonder if those are maybe some characteristics of your partner. Um, I also feel like there's like this ageless quality to them. So I don't know what their actual like chronological age would be, but I feel like whatever their energy is like, it it's um there's some sort of like I feel like they have like a lot of inner wisdom, right? And so they have this maturity about them. So like even if your soulmate's like a younger person, um, I feel like they give like like older elder like mentor mentor vibes, right? Um, I also feel like maybe your person has a bit of like culture to them, right? A little bit of global influence to them. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like your soulmate's like an Olympic athlete. Um, but we also have personality traits here. So with this card, with the world, I feel like, I feel like your soulmate definitely is very much a master in some way they have their they have this expertise about them and i feel like they know how to hone their skills and their knowledge through dedication and experience and i think that they really do get this respect and recognition from other people um i also feel like they're very very accomplished in some ways i feel like they're not in some ways i feel like they're just very very accomplished so i feel like this person has a really good track record with achieving their aspirations. I feel like they know how to set very ambitious goals for themselves and they do have this determination and this perseverance to really see them through to completion, right? I also feel like this person's very generous. They're very compassionate. Um, I think that they, this person, I feel like they're, like the, the word legacy keeps popping up. So I feel like this person also maybe aspires to leave some sort of legacy or like a meaningful impact on the world. I feel like they're very much driven by this greater sense of purpose and they really do strive to contribute to the greater good of society, right? I think this is someone who's probably achieved a significant amount of milestones and I do think that they remain very committed to their personal growth and their development and I also feel like they know how to embrace new opportunities for learning and self-improvement and I think they're always seeking to expand their knowledge and skills. So if this sounds like you also and you're interested in personal development and self-growth. I do have a podcast called the That's Deep Podcast. It's all about personal development and spirituality. I talk about personality types, Myers-Briggs personality types. I talk about astrology, how to understand your signs, your birth chart the easy way. Um, so yeah, definitely check it out. I have interviews with a bunch of different people um, of various different personality types, various different um, career paths. So lots of stories of triumph and they're all empowering. So definitely check it out. I have it linked for you in the description if you're interested. Um, but yeah, let's get into the witch here. So this one says the witch experimentation rebellion. So with this card, I feel like your soulmate is definitely someone who's an innovative thinker. I think that they constantly seek to discover new ways of doing things, whether this is in their personal life or their professional life. I think that this person is definitely driven by curiosity and this desire to almost like push the boundaries. So I do think that your soulmate is a rebel at heart. They have a very rebellious nature about them. These are the people that are not afraid to question authority or, you know, stand up against rules or traditions that they really feel are outdated or oppressive. And I don't think that this rebellious streak is for the sake of defiance. It's really from this deep seated belief in progress and change. Um, and with that being said, I do feel like your soulmate is a very independent spirit. They really do value their autonomy. Maybe they prefer to carve their own path rather than following the crowd. Um, I think that this channel also attracts a lot of those kind of people too. So if this sounds like you, um, pile four, then yes. But yeah, I do feel like your, your soulmate pile four, they also have a very strong creative drive, right? So they know how to experiment with different forms of expression, whether this is an art or science or really any of the other fields that allow for freedom and flexibility as it has to do with like creating and experimenting. I also feel like your soulmate has a lot of like courage and conviction. They have this bold energy that really allows them to take risks and pursue unconventional paths. And I do feel like their convictions, um, they guide their actions and they give them that extra boost in the face of any sort of challenge or adversity or criticism. I also feel like your soulmate has a very magnetic presence. Um, they have a very unique perspective and 
maybe this fearless approach really draws other people into them. So I do feel like your soulmate is somebody that can inspire and lead others who do share their vision and who are captivated by their authenticity. Um, I just think that your 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 soulmate pile four has a very transformative in, like impact about their energy. So through things like their actions and their ideas, they are able to bring about significant change, right? Whether this is challenging the status quo or paving the new way for new possibilities, right? Their influence can actually be super profound and it really will actually leave um, a very lasting mark on their community or their field or whatever it is that they're creating in. Now we also have the card of Cindy Sherman. So three pieces of advice, one for life, work, and then inspiration for life. It says, don't be yourself be yourselves. I assume that means that there's many versions of ourselves. Um, for work, it says, tell the truth in every fiction. And for inspiration, it says, take a good long look in someone else's mirror. She's a contemporary artist and she's known for provocative self-portraits, innovative ones, right? Um, she really does push the boundaries of traditional art forms. She's not afraid to experiment with things. Um, so I do feel like your soulmate's very versatile, very transformative, very provocative, right? Very thought provoking. But I also feel like your soulmate is someone who's very meticulous, very detail oriented. I also think that your soulmate has some is someone who's had very like many different iterations of themselves, right? I think that they've um, they've they've been different versions of, them, of themselves is what I'm hearing. But all were were authentic, right? Nothing was a mask. Nothing was fake. It was all different pieces of their evolution is what I'm feeling. I also feel like um, your soulmate is fascinated by like human behavior. So I think that they have an interest in either understanding human be behavior or psychology or like social dynamics. But I do feel like this curiosity, it drives their work and it drives any sort of like creative themes that they explore. So yeah, I definitely think that your soulmate's bold. They're fearless. Um, I think that they know how to they're like good storytellers too. Like I think they, um, and not in a bad way, but like they know how to tell a good narrative, you know? I think that they know how to use their art as a medium to communicate some complex ideas and emotions, right? I also think that your soulmate's very much this aesthetic and a visual thinker. Um, I do think that they have this very strong sense of, of aesthetics. And we also have connection. This one says tarantula. Right away, I feel like your soulmate's someone who is intuitive. They're sensitive. I also feel like they're patient and deliberate, right? Because it takes a lot of deliberate effort and intention to weave a web, right? Um, so I also feel like they're very nurturing and supportive. I feel like they're empathetic and compassionate as well as resourceful and creative, right? And then I do think that they're also protective and loyal, like fiercely protective of their loved ones. And I think that this is someone that shows unwavering loyalty. So like once they form a connection, they're committed to maintaining and nurturing that, um, per, like nurturing that, right? I don't know if for some of you, um, your soulmate out there is like really good with like counseling or therapy or social work. Maybe they are involved in human resources or the creative arts. Just a couple things. Of course, that list is not exhaustive, but now we are in the part of the reading where we talk about how you'll come into contact with your soulmate so this one says solitude in silence peace prevails so with this one i feel like you might meet your soulmate during like a peaceful retreat in nature maybe like being by a forest you'll probably meet your soulmate in a place that's very meditative or um, in a place that is very calming maybe like a meditation or a yoga retreat or maybe like maybe like an art gallery or a museum even like a library or a bookstore or maybe some of you meet your soulmate when you're solo traveling or maybe it's some sort of like a tea house or a quiet cafe maybe it's a, like a small intimate gathering right like small low-key social events where like you have very meaningful conversations right and the opportunity to connect with other people, right? We also have love tomato here. This is Libra energy. And then this one says love potion. That makes me think of that song love potion number nine. Um, but yeah, with this, I feel like where you'll meet, um, them, where you'll meet your soulmate could be again, like a social gathering, um, maybe some sort of like creative or artistic environment. 
I'm also feeling like volunteering or community service. Um, but with like tomato here, maybe in a restaurant. Italy, maybe in Italy for some of you. I know that's pretty specific. Maybe in a cooking class or like a food festival or yeah, something. We also have the Ram and Dahlia. This one says determination. So with this one, I feel like maybe you meet them in the pursuit of some sort of shared goal, right? So maybe you meet them through work or like a project, right? Um, maybe you meet them at some sort of like professional event or a conference. Um, or maybe, you know, you meet them again, like I'm feeling like volunteer work or activism. Maybe during some sort of like major life event or transition. I just think it's going to be in some sort of setting where determination and ambition and perseverance are key. We also have, I accept that good things come easily. I'm a super attractor. So this makes me feel like you'll meet your soulmate when like you're not actively looking for them, right? Like you're not trying to find the love of your life. It's just going to be magnetized into you at the at the divine right time. And I know like for some of you here, like that's probably very frustrating, right? Like it'll happen in divine timing, you know, when the time is right and you're like, okay, well, what time is it? Because I've been waiting forever, right? I can hear some of you saying that, but um, it's more of just like when the stars align is what I'm hearing with this one, you know, like fate, destiny, chance, your soulmate won't miss, like, you won't miss the chance to meet them is like what I'm feeling strongly here. Okay, let's get into our tea leaf fortune cards. Let's find out what else you need to know for your highest and best good. Pile four. Pile four. What else do you need to know for your highest and best? Okay, we have chair empty. Someone is leaving your life. We have finger warning. Um, warning you of a problem either now or in the near future. We have bouquet, compliments from an admirer. You also have elephant, a long journey, either physical or mental will leave you wiser at the end. Rooster, an arrogant, boastful person. You should not cross. We have bird flying. News is on the way. We also have vase, secret admirer. And then we have not unsuccessful plans. And then we also have money path. A path with money is waiting for you to find it. Okay, so pile four. What I'm feeling is that for some of you here, maybe you have been in some sort of connection with someone who maybe felt a little toxic or like maybe felt like this person wasn't for your highest and best good, right? Maybe they you felt like they were arrogant or boastful or just not great. Um, maybe you felt like this just wasn't for you. Maybe you've had to move on from this old unsuccessful plan, right? Like maybe you were in some sort of long-term relationship before and you thought, hey, this is probably going to be my person. And um, maybe things didn't work out, right? Maybe um, you had this feeling like, there's going to be a problem with this person in the future. So I am going to leave now and I'll be wiser, right? A long journey, either physical or mental will leave you wiser at the end. This is just for select some of you is what I'm feeling. Not for everyone for sure. Um, <clears throat> that message right there, but it's almost like leaving the past behind so that you can open up and clear the space for someone new. Um, because you have a secret admirer and then compliments from an admirer. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, so pile four, you have a secret admirer, and I don't know if you're going to be getting some sort of like news, some sort of message from them, some sort of compliment. Maybe some of you are, are going to be getting flowers from them. Um, you also have um, money path, so expect some money to be coming your way. Um, you know what's funny? I think every single pile here, 
at the end of the reading they had some sort of message about them gonna like getting money and I know this is a love reading but I always say I love when um, other messages pop through and every single pile here um, is ex you know can be expected to have more money in the near future so that's super exciting and it's great when everyone's supported so yes yes thank you so much pile four please give this video a big thumbs up if it resonates it really does help the channel comment below with what pile you chose i do love to chat with you all in the comments subscribe if you haven't already thank you please take care of yourself hope to see you on the next video after this check out my channel title tarot here i do have a playlist with a ton of pick a card readings everything from love relationships money manifestation career all those fun things so check it out but if not this time i'll see you on the next video bye pal four